today, we're doing aerobic exercise biopack. We're going to include our EKG that we did a couple weeks ago with the pulmonary exercise we did last week. And we're also going to measure our skin temperature. And we're going to put all this stuff into a big comprehensive understanding of what happens when we use energy over five minutes. So we're going to see changes in our cardiovascular system through the EKG and through our respiratory system through the lung volumes and flow. So we're going to talk about this in sections, starting with pulmonary function. We've seen volume. That is an amount of gas in liters. Today we're going to see something different. We're going to see flow. Flow is a rate. So that's the amount of air that moves in a given amount of time. The volume is the amount in liters. So if we look here, you breathe in, notice it starts here at zero, you breathe in, you increase the volume, you breathe out, you decrease the volume. Simple, right? But then regarding flow, this took me a minute to understand. So we're gonna oscillate between zero, going positive and negative. So on the inhale, you breathe in, lungs fill up, so what's going on is the rate, you start out slow, you start at zero, and it increases, and then as you approach the exhale, it gets back down to zero. So at baseline, that's where you switch between inhale and exhale. So it goes in, and then towards the end of it, it slows down a little bit. So here we're looking at the speed of the air going in and out of our lungs. Cool? So just be aware, this is positive negative, and just to help explain that, we have a filter on the inside of this. The biopack, the machine, is picking up movement across the membrane inside of this filter. So you breathe in, and you're pulling air this way against it, giving you a negative value. As you breathe out, you're pushing the air in the opposite direction. Positive, negative, they're opposites. That's what's going on with the positive, negative values here. But just keep in mind that volume is never going to be negative. Cool. Okay, so as we exercise, so this is exercise intensity, you're going to breathe faster. And you're also going to take in more air. So we're going to see an increase in flow and tidal volume as we do our exercise. And we're going to do this because oxygen helps us make energy. So we can have anaerobic respiration, you know, people that uh, go to the gym and they just crank out sets. They're doing a lot of really quick, rapid energy expenditure using anaerobic respiration. We're going to try and keep our exercise at a slow rate today so that we can measure aerobic respiration. In your biopack, you're going to see something called oxygen debt. I just want to explain what that is. So as you exercise, you use oxygen, right? But then when you stop, you're at an energy deficit. So you've used a lot of energy, and you need to rebuild that energy storage back to where you were before you started. So we're still going to keep consuming oxygen at a decreasing rate until we've fully recovered our energy storage. Okay? So what's going on here? You just you make more energy when you use your mitochondrion. You're gonna produce like what is it? Fifteen times more energy when you use oxygen versus when you don't. So that is your oxygen debt. Here's your fun metabolic pathway if you really want to know about it. Not responsible for it though. And then just keep in mind that your breathing rate influences your pH of your blood. Based on this equation, again, you don't need to know it, but pH, basic, or acidic, based on how much O2 or CO2 is in your blood. Okay, heart rate. Keep in mind, heart rate is number of beats over change in time. Change in time is going to be in seconds, so we make that into minutes by multiplying by 60 over 1. Go ahead and just commit it to memory. This is the equation for BPM. Whether you're talking about beats per minute or breaths per minute, it's the number over the change in time times 60 over 1. So BPM, breaths, beats, same equation. Oh, 
also the way that the biopack is going to measure your heart rate, you're going to get a, a heart rate uh, channel today. We're going to have four channels you're going to see. And what it's going to do is it's going to find the QRS complexes, because those are big peaks. They stand out. And then however many QRS complexes in a given amount of time, it'll measure your <coughs> integrated heart rate in real time. And what you're going to see is that as you start exercising, your heart rate in beats per minute increases, and then you stop exercising, it's going to decrease. People who are fit will have a lower resting heart rate. They'll also have a lower heart rate during exercise compared to someone who is unfit. Well, we would expect to see this. I actually heard about somebody who had a lower heart rate during exercise compared to before exercise, somebody who was like really athletic. Yeah, their heart rate went down as they exercised. So it's something funny like that happens every day. So that's interesting. Okay. Okay, and as we exercise, we increase our heart rate so that we can get blood to our skeletal muscles, do that gas exchange. And we're also going to see an increase in stroke volume. <coughs> Somebody tell me what stroke volume is. Yeah. So it's going to come from which chamber of the heart? Left ventricle. So how much volume is the left ventricle ejecting in a beat? And if you have increased heart rate, increased stroke volume, that's going to affect your cardiac output. You're going to have more cardiac output. And I really like this figure. Just take a look here. So during heavy exercise versus during rest, cardiac output of 25 liters per minute versus 5 liters per minute. Again, stroke volume and heart rate increase, giving a much higher value here. So during heavy exercise, 75% of your blood is going to your muscles. Because you need that gas exchange, you need that energy there. But during rest, 15, 20% is going to your muscles. Because you have other things that you need to give your energy for. And let's just keep in mind that parasympathetic and sympathetic autonomic nervous system influences our heart rate. What was the problem with the fainting firefighter? The sympathetic autonomic. Yeah. Sorry, I just green lasered you in the face. Yeah, so the fainting firefighter had sympathetic autonomic failure. That led him to faint. All right, blood pressure. Coolest word you'll learn all year. Sphygmomanometer. That's the name of a blood pressure reader. You don't need to know that. It's a really easy word. So the way this is going to work, you are going to open this up. Put it on your arm. And then it's important that you don't measure like this. You don't want to be attached to your rib cage here, right? You want to have your arm away from your torso. And you know, if you can have it like this on the desk or on the bench, that's best. Uh, you all seen in those little clinics where you put your hand in the thing, right? And it squeezes, feels like it's gonna break your arm off. That's what we're doing right here. These are automatic, so you just push start. It's gonna go, it'll increase pressure in this and then decrease, it'll give you a value on here. Just be sure to record those as you do it. We're gonna take five of those today. And this can give us diagnostic markers, uh, whether you're a normal person, you have high blood pressure, or if we need to get you to the ER. So somebody has a reading of 180 over 110, let's get some attention to them, right? So that being said, if you're like really high, you feel like you're gonna faint during this exercise, please stop, right? We don't need any medical emergencies today, especially after an exam. Oh, and then also you have systolic and diastolic, so that's your, your squeezing or your relaxing motions, how much pressure you have. So it makes sense, as you squeeze, the pressure is higher than when it's relaxing. So that's why these values are higher than these values. So like I said, we're taking five of these today. So before you even get started with your exercise, you're going to take three. One, standing up. Then you're going to lay on the bench, wait like two minutes. 
to acclimate to laying down, you're going to take it again. So that's what the two minutes prior is. So you're going to lay down, wait a couple minutes, measure. Then you're going to stand up and measure again, immediately after standing from laying down on the bench. Then you're going to do your exercises. We'll go over that. As soon as you're done exercising, you're going to take another blood pressure measurement. Then five minutes after exercise, you'll do it again. In your table, it prompts you to do a two minutes, a five minutes, and ten minutes. We're just doing five. Okay? You don't need to do ten minutes after exercise. Skin temp. So as we exercise, we send our blood to our skeletal muscles. So will the blood vessels leading to our muscles dilate or constrict? So they're dilating. And so as we're sending blood there, vessels to the periphery, they're going to constrict so that the blood can flow to our muscles. So what we see is muscle temperature increases because that's where the blood's going. Your skin temperature is going to decrease because you don't want the blood going there. You want it going to your muscles. Don't get me wrong. Some blood's there. It's just not as much as it is right now. And we're going to measure that using a little wire thermometer. Again, that's called a thermistor. And we're going to measure relative to our starting temp. So we're going to say that right now you're at zero. And we're going to measure in degrees Fahrenheit. So if it's greater than your starting temp, it's going to be a positive value. So if you go from 98 to 100, that's plus 2. You go from 98 to 90, minus 8. Okay, So negative less than your starting temp. And so again, Decrease during exercise, and then after exercise, you're going to see it go back up. It's going to slowly raise back up within that five minutes. Because they were constricted, and then they dilate back. And this is just a figure to show what we just talked about. So here's the, so this is where exercise starts. Temp drops, and then exercise ends here. And you can see it raise back up here. So that's what you'll see. It's going to take a couple minutes. I'll put this up once you all get done with your recording. So this is what we're going to set up. We're using delta T, delta, and peak to peak today. OK, I'll leave this up while you're doing your exercise. But pay attention. So we have different colors here. The yellow is for what buttons to push to set your markers on the top. We are doing. 60 air squats today. So what you're going to do is we're going to stay hooked up the whole time. You're going to be like a robot person. You're going to have three electrodes on for the EKG. You're going to have your skin temp with the thermistor. And you're going to be breathing into the spirometer. Okay. So all this is happening at once. You're going to go down. Take about a second going down. Wait for a couple seconds and come back up. Go down, wait, and come back up. So I saw some people on Monday going like this, just real fast. That's going to give you more of the anaerobic. We want to do slow and steady, like a long duration. Okay. So do about 60 of these. It'll take you about five minutes. Again, don't go too fast. Right after exercise, we're pushing F5, taking blood pressure again. <coughs> And yep, that is, that's really it. So really important to, since we had some funny lung volume measurements, if you want to use nose clips, that's fine. I don't really think it's necessary. You can just hold your nose. Um, just make sure that all the air goes through that mouthpiece, in and out, nothing, nothing through your nose. If you want to wear nose clips, we have them over here for you. And all right, you want to talk about this? Three points on your, your timer, right? So during exercise, heart rate increase, decrease. Typically, that's going to increase. Typically, right? And if heart rate increases, we're going to have stroke volume. 
increase as well. So heart rate and stroke volume increase, what's that going to change? Cardiac output, and it will increase, right? That's this one right here. Uh, we're also going to see blood pressure increase, um, arterial serving the skin, dilate or constrict. In the skin, they're going to constrict, and we're going to see higher blood pressure there. And then serving skeletal muscles, they're, they will dilate, and we'll see a lower blood pressure there. More space, less pressure. Smaller space, higher pressure. And that's what we're using. OK, we're also going to do BMI. So if you get a funny BMI measurement, don't freak out, OK? BMI just goes by weight, age, and height. And it doesn't consider muscle versus fat. So again, you get a crazy BMI, don't think you're going to die today, right? Be worried about your blood pressure more than anything. And that is that. Who has questions about what we're doing? No? All right. So we're doing today, I have this right here for you. So again, we're going to see four channels. You're going to see airflow. So this is where we have the positive and negative values, unlike the volumes where we only had positives. EKG, skin temp, and heart rate. Yep, I see you all are good to go. Um, I've got your electrodes here.